What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. I've always considered myself a bit of a treasure hunter. Tracking down the rarest games and learning about their history is my greatest passion, and I've discovered that there are some projects that are just lost to time. This can be because of a mysterious factory fire or a developer going insane, but each one has an interesting backstory. So this week, we're diving into that, the titles that we'll probably never see again, on my picks for the top 10 games lost forever. Number 10. Too Human. Most likely, there are many of you out there who haven't even heard of this game before, but it was actually considered a rather important thing at launch. Too Human was supposed to be the first huge project of the Xbox 360 and was meant to show off how intense the graphics and gameplay could be on this new hardware. While it didn't turn out necessarily bad, it also wasn't very great, and yet, this is where the situation gets weird. The developers at Silicon Knights tried to sue their bosses at Epic Games for not helping them make Too Human better. During this court case, it came out that these guys have been secretly stealing programs and software from Epic Games, leading them to getting absolutely destroyed legally. The judge made Silicon Knights take their game off all online marketplaces and even force stores to remove every single disc off shelves and throw them away. Number 9. Super Mario Bros. Special Every company has to experiment to keep growing and changing. Improving requires being able to see where you can make money and expanding in that direction. So obviously, when Nintendo was hurting for cash in the early days, they looked into making PC games. That might shock you, but there really is a couple official spin-offs that are essentially missing from history. Super Mario Bros. Special was quietly released for computers in Japan and features a few key changes that make it stand out from the original Mario. They brought in enemies from other Nintendo series. The physics are strange loose, you can jump extra high, and the art style is slightly screwed up. It's a product that you wouldn't believe exists, except for the reality that it does. Due to its extremely limited printing, this is a slice of Nintendo's past we won't be seeing again. Number 8. The Real Resident Evil 2 the 90s was a perfect time for survival horror. With the PlayStation being brought out, companies had access to cutting-edge visuals and more room to tinker with new control methods, leading to some of the best scares of the generation. A team that was at the forefront of this technology race was Capcom and the Resident Evil games. When everything was done with the first title in the franchise, they were so excited, the developers instantly began sketching out plans on how they could properly handle a follow-up. What you're seeing here is the raw gameplay of a project that for years was called Resident Evil 2. You'll notice that this hero is one who doesn't appear in any of the finished games. Her name is Elza, and she goes on a very different adventure than what was put in the later version of RE2. This build was pretty far along. In fact, she has neat guns, a cool upgrade system for her skills, and a fully written story. At the very last second though, all of this was redone to be the Resident Evil we have today. Number 7. Panzer Dragoon Saga Accidents happen to everyone. They're unavoidable. When you're at work and have deadlines, you need to move quickly and stay on task no matter what goes wrong. These tiny errors can ruin everything though if you're not careful, as we learned with Panzer Dragoon Saga. This RPG was one of the final big games created for the Sega Saturn. They made a completely unique combat system, a plot about Dragon Civil Wars, and even rendered gorgeous cutscenes which were very difficult for the era. After finishing testing and readying it to ship, they took all the source code used to make copies of it and placed it on Sega's main server. From here, they could easily send it to factories and churn out batches to fulfill the thousands of pre-orders. While they did successfully get this opening set out the door and in the hands of gamers, shortly after, there was an accidental fire at Sega headquarters that destroyed the master copy. This means that the only way to print more of Panzer Dragoon Saga was cut off forever, leaving it as the rarest game for the console. Number 6 English Final Fantasy 2 I love this series more than any other franchise ever made. If you've been subscribed for a bit, you know that well, but among Final Fantasy fans, there's a legend of a lost title that never came to America despite the fact that it was ready for launch. 
English-speaking audiences got a game called Final Fantasy II in 1991, and yet, this was really the fourth title in the series. There were two other Final Fantasies that were totally made in Japan, but Squaresoft took so long to translate them, they decided to not bring them stateside, instead focusing their efforts on the newly released Super Nintendo. The bizarre part is, by digging into records, we can see that they had a finalized version of the original Final Fantasy II ready to go back in the late NES days. There are even people who claim to have played this when Square was trying to see how popular this might be. Unfortunately, seemingly for no reason, they halted production, leaving diehard Final Fantasy aficionados like me without this amazing piece of history. Number 5. Flappy Bird in all the years I've been writing Top 10 Thursday, I've never put a cell phone game on the list. They just normally aren't that interesting, and there's nothing to talk about. However, with Flappy Bird, what really draws my attention is how quickly it exploded and then died. This rather simple project consisted of you tapping a screen to make a vertically challenged bird do a pathetic flap of its wings. The goal is to survive passing between as many pipes as possible until your inevitable death. On the surface, this is about as dumb and straightforward as a game can be, but for some reason it took off. Within weeks, it had millions of downloads, and even major YouTubers were making videos on it. It looked like everybody was having a great time, that is, except for the designer of Flappy Bird. Dong Win was being hammered by thousands of angry messages a week from those who sucked at Flappy Bird, and he was being driven insane by it. The constant hatred put overwhelming pressure on him that he eventually couldn't take. He only saw one solution to solve this problem, so one morning, he woke up and tweeted that in 22 hours, he'd irreversibly delete every copy of Flappy Bird in the world. Number 4. Half-Life Dreamcast First-person shooters in the modern era are usually thought of because of their multiplayer-centered gameplay and their competitive nature. Titles like Call of Duty sell mind-boggling amounts of copies because of its addictive online capabilities. Back in the day, though, FPSs were more considered the single-player-only experiences. This is in large measure due to Half-Life. Gordon Freeman is just a regular scientist caught up in an experiment gone haywire that opens up an interdimensional rift, letting in some very bad aliens. It's now his job to solve 3D puzzles blast some dog-shaped invaders, and use his crowbar to bash skulls while saving humanity. This gameplay style broke the mold and nearly formed its own genre, so when news came out that this revolutionary title would be coming to Dreamcast, it was hotly anticipated. Mere months before its slated release date, Half-Life suddenly was cancelled, and the team working on it went silent. This was so close to launch, you could buy a strategy guide for the game, which is just weird to see. Seriously, you can get a book for a game that never came out. Many of us assume that this would be the conclusion of the tale, that is until someone leaked the project onto the internet. This is a fully playable version of the game from start to finish, which made people wonder, why was this classic kept from the public? Number 3. Thrill Kill Imagine if there was a game so violent that everyone involved with its development was slightly worried about releasing it. Thrill Kill was intended to be a hyper-intense fighting game vaguely in the style of Super Smash Bros. or Power Stone. The goal was to rip apart all your foes and be the last creature standing. There are no health bars, but instead a kill meter. Think of this as your ultimate attack that charges up by dealing damage to others in the arena. When it's maxed out, you can deliver one ultra-deadly strike that'll blow an opponent into gory chunks until only a single person remains. So much of the design here was meant to be over the top. Combatants have knives for legs, or wear sexy outfits that border on lewd, all in an effort to be shocking. When the programmers turned in the completed game, their bosses knew that they couldn't sell it, and that they'd likely get sued by some angry parents. Despite the fact that it was fully ready to be passed out to distributors, it was canned. What's kinda disgusting is later on they reskinned this into a horrible Wu-Tang Clan fighting game. To me personally, I believe that this is far more offensive than just watching a couple demons tear each other apart in the lowest layers of hell. Number 2. Zelda The Ancient Stone Tablets It's rather staggering to think of something as iconic as Zelda having a lost game, but it very much happened. In Japan, they of course got their own version of the Super Nintendo called the Super Famicom. Since most developers at the time were based in this country, it got hundreds more titles than we got here in America, but more importantly than that, they got extra hardware add-ons. This silly looking hunk of plastic was called the BSX Broadcasting System, a device that let players download games digitally via satellite. Nintendo was aware that they'd need a strong project to pull an interest for this unique piece of tech, so they built a custom Zelda for it. 
It featured a new plot that takes place six years after A Link to the Past, a character based on you wearing a backwards baseball cap, and a diverse group of dungeons with mechanics never again seen in the series. The people who made this clearly love what they were tinkering with because it's pure excitement crammed into every screen. Sadly, the only way to play this was on that satellite gadget, and once the service ended, it disappeared. Number 1. Silent Hills in the last decade, there hasn't been a title more infamous than Silent Hills. The epic director of Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima, was getting to finally live out his dream of making a horror game. He craved an experience that would push fear so deep into your subconscious that you'd be afraid and not understand why. To tease fans as to the existence of this project, they dropped a seemingly random demo called PT onto the PlayStation Store one night. Within hours, hundreds if not thousands of people were playing it, attempting to unlock its secrets. The gameplay revolved around a man trapped in a creepy, infinite hallway. Walking out one end would have you reappear back at the beginning, but with subtle changes to the environment. Maybe a picture frame would be cracked, or a radio would begin talking to you about a recent chain of brutal murders. As all of this goes down, there's also an oddly tall ghost wandering through this confined house, and if she touches you, she'll break you like a twig. The secrets hidden in this hallway were clues as to how we'll be able to play Silent Hills, maybe what the story would be like, maybe it would teach us what the characters are, but now all of that's gone. Konami deleted PT, automatically removed it from PS4s that had it installed, and basically pretends that it was never around, and for that reason, I'm more to this my pick as the game that is totally gone forever. Did your favorite piece of history not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, but do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming! This video seriously took months to research. This is something I've been secretly working on for, for so long, easily since the beginning of 2016, I've had this idea in my head. I've even actually gathered up some of the physical evidence of this stuff, like this is a reproduction of the mythological English translation of Final Fantasy II. So if you want to help me out, share this video somewhere. It would actually mean a lot if this video somehow blew up. So thank you so much for watching and sharing and liking. And it was a total dumpster fire. Oh, hi. I'm just working on the next video. If you want to see what it is, go ahead and click this button and you can subscribe. Also, if you click these video links, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. Now I'm just going to sit here for a minute and uh, wait for you to subscribe. Oh, I guess I could put on these giant glasses. I literally found these on a roller coaster.